Yeah, so we're going to understand how we get to convert uh, decimal numbers, especially the recurring ones, to fractions. So if you look at uh, this 1.3, what it means is 1.3 recurring. It means that the threes are not ending. So look at all these four different cases. Of course, beginning with the simplest one to the one that looks more complicated. Okay, so the last one, to just help you understand, what it means is uh, the buy is only on 3 and 2. So it means 3 and 2 are recurring like that. They are not ending. So how basically do we get to convert all these four to fractions? So beginning with the first one. So 0 0.25. So the first thing that we'd want to do in such a case is you want to move a decimal point to the last point. So it has to move 1, 2. So we need to multiply by 100 in such a case. Now remember this is being divided by 1. So 100, whatever you do to a denominator or to a numerator, that is, should also be done to a denominator. So we are now having... Remember what it means if you are multiplying... By, the numerator and the denominator of the same number, it means you're just multiplying by 1. So you're not changing the, the number itself. So you have 25 over 100. Now, you know these have got a common factor. 25 can be divided into 100. How many times? 4 times. So in 25 is 1. So it's 1 over 4. And if you have a calculator or even just dividing, 1 divided by 4 is 0 0.25, which is true. So we've answered the first part. We can now move to... The recurring ones. How is it different when you have recurring numbers? Okay, so that one is done. So 1.3 recurring. <clears throat> so a few steps that you'd have to take note of is each time you're dealing with a recurring number, make sure that you have the recurring to all the recurring numbers should be on the right hand side. Okay, from the start. So in this case, we have 1.3 recurring. So you have to equate it as it is. Form an equation. Equate it to x. So x is equal to the given number 1.3 recurring as it is. So the first step is to make sure that all the recurring numbers, only the recurring numbers are appearing on the right hand side of a decimal point. So in this case, we only have the recurring number appearing. So that's okay. So in such a case now, we'd have to move now the entire recurring number across the decimal point. So we can only do that by multiplying by a 10. Now the fact that we have a recurring number, recurring means not ending three is just quick. So if you multiply it by 10, you have 13, right? But you still have recurring numbers there after. So if you multiply uh, both uh, sides of the equation by 10, you have 10x being equal to 13.3 recurring. Okay. Remember there are still more Three is uh, that are recurring, right? They are not ending. So now this point allows us we can now subtract both sides. 10x minus x is 9x. Now subtracting the right hand side, 13.3 recurring minus 1.3 recurring. So the basic idea is you'd want to make sure that each time you're subtracting, the recurring parts are cancelling out, or they're subtracting. So you end up 13 subtracting a 1, which is going to give us a 12, right? So we have a 12. So we are now dividing by 9 on both sides. So we have 12 divided by 9. So a common factor there is 3. 3 into 12 is 4 times into 9 is 3. So 4 over 3 is basically 1.3 recurring. So you can try that on the calculator. Okay. So that is an introduction to how you basically get to deal with the recurring numbers. Let's now try to see the one that looks a bit different. So this time around, we have 10.32 recurring. So what that number tells us is we have 10.3 and then 2s are not ending because the bias is on 2. Okay, so as usual, we'll let our x be equal to that. 10.32 recurring. Now, I said the first step is to now make sure that what is appearing on the right hand side of a decimal point is only the recurring number of the recurring numbers. So we'd have to multiply. So 3 is not part of the recurring digit. So we are supposed to move it to the left hand side of a decimal point. So we just need to multiply by a 10. So we have 10x. And then that becomes 
103.2. So we just now have recurring twos after the decimal point. So that's what we wanted. Now at this point, notice that if you try to subtract, what is on the right hand side of the decimal point, the first equation and the second equation doesn't match up. So you can't basically subtract. So we'd rather now take another step and now again move the recurring part to the left hand side. So how do you do that? You'd have to multiply by a 10 since we only have a single recurring number. So both sides, this side it will become 100x. The other side, if you multiply by 10, 1, 2 will move, but you still have recurring numbers. Remember, recurring numbers do not end. So even after moving 1, 2 towards the left, you still have recurring twos thereafter. Okay, so at this point, you're now able to subtract, right? So 100 minus 10x is going to give us what? So 100 minus 10, that's a 90x is equal to. Now, you're able to say that these now are able to subtract, right? Since they are matching up. Now, 1032 is being subtracted by what? By 103. So 1032 minus a 103. Uh, what answer do you expect to have there? So that's simple mathematics. So you know 3, we can borrow, so 12. 12 minus 3, that is like a 9. And then you would like have 2. And then you have a 9. So 929. Okay. So you're now having 90 dividing into 929 on both sides. So 90, 90. So that's what is remaining there. 929 over 90 as what? As your result, as your fraction. I don't know if you're able to reduce that. But, but I feel even at that point it's still fine. 929 over 90. So if you try that number, if you try to divide the two numbers, they're supposed to give you 10.3 with recurring twos. Okay, so if you now understand all that, I think you're now at liberty of trying out the last one before I even solve it. So try, pause the video and try out the last one. So let's now try to see the last one. So we have 10.132. Recurring. So in this case, what is the buy is on three and two alone. So it means we have got three and two recurring like that. I, I did explain that from the start. So how would you handle that question? So let me put the three twos, three twos. So they are not ending. Maybe just for the sake of understanding there. So of course I said let the begin an equation with the given question, right? So that's how we're going to start it. I'll put the bar there. So the first thing that we need to make sure is what is appearing on the right hand side is only the recurring parts. So one is not part of the recurring number. So we'd have to equally move it. So multiply both sides by 10. So you have now 101. So you're now only remaining with the recurring digits on the right hand side. Now this is a bit different because you've got two recurring numbers and like the first one where you had the single recurring number. So here we've got three and two recurring. So what basically happens in this case? In the next step, you're supposed to move the entire recurring digits to the left as well. But remember, since we've got this recurring, even after multiplying by 100, you still remain with the recurring digits. So if you multiply by 100 both sides, where there's a 10, it becomes a thousand x. And then if you multiply by 100 this side, it becomes the entire recurring digit 3 and 2 move. So that you still remain with the recurring digits again. Okay. So at this point, they're now able to subtract. These sides are able to subtract. So a 1,000 minus a, a 10, it gives you 990x is equal to. Now we have 10132 minus 101. So we have one three zero zero one, right? I hope I'm, I'm correct with fire. So we have ten thousand thirty one, then divided by nine ninety on both sides. So ultimately, this is the the result. So that's a fraction that you expect to. So you can grab your calculator and basically try out that one if it's basically going to give you that number.
So let me try that on my calculator as well. So it's giving me 10.1, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2. Okay, so basically that is how you guys can get to and all these. So I believe now you now know how basically you need to convert a decimal number to, to a fraction, whether it's recurring or just a normal, fra a, a normal decimal number. Okay, so this now takes us to a point where we now understand that recurring numbers recurring decimals are rationals you can easily convert them to a fraction so they are rational numbers